the next thing I'd, I'd like you to do is we want to translate your issues, your stories, what you're thinking about is important, into something specific, and specifically a question, a question that can be answered. Um, in my experience, as someone who has uh, worked to tell stories, who writes a lot about um, uh, neighborhoods who experience disadvantage, um, the stories are complex, incredibly complex, right? And to tell someone um, quickly or, or, to, or to just get it out quickly, well, maybe you can do that, but maybe you didn't get the whole story out, or maybe when you start to try to tell the story in more detail, you find yourself getting pulled this direction or pulled that direction. And two weeks later, after trying to tell your story, you realize you're studying the history of something you never thought was part of your story. And you've kind of lost your focus. And that's um, not because the direction you went isn't a very good direction. It's because of the complexity of the stories we're trying to tell. So the next exercise is about focusing our issue into some question that we can answer. A specific question, an answerable question, um, a persuasive question. A persuasive question. And I think uh, some of those words are written there on, um, on your handout there. Specific, answerable, and persuasive. Um, and we also want to write these down. We want them written down. We want them somewhere so that when someone asks me, well, what story are you trying to tell? Well, I'm, I'm trying to answer this question in my story. right? You want it written down so that two weeks later, when you went on this path interviewing a bunch of people in your neighborhood about this issue, and they brought you so many different directions about so many incidents and, and, and successes and struggles that you can still go back and say, oh yeah, that's what I was doing. Written down here is this one piece that I'm trying to answer. I need to stay focused there. I can change my question midstream. I can answer a second question later, right? But this is where I was going. This is the direction I was going. And so I need to stay focused there. And I want that written down so that when I get caught in the weeds of all this complexity, I can always refer back to, to where I was going. And, and I guess an important part in my experience, and so that we can get to an end, right? Because we get so enmeshed in those details, sometimes we miss the back end, which is going to be part of our training here, which is how do I get that to my state senator? How do I get that to the Denver Post so they produce it, right? Because I spent so much time in the details, I never got to the end. But this keeps us focused and on that path. So next, what I want you to do is pick one or two of those issues that you've identified, probably the ones highest on your priority list, and create some questions that you might be able to ask that would inform those issues, right? And those questions should be specific, answerable, and persuasive. And I've taken a, a shot at trying to give you examples of maybe some specific, answerable, and persuasive questions. And maybe you can critique my work and tell me, well, Daniel, I'm not sure that's really very specific there. But an example of a question, what percentage of the children in my neighborhood are occasionally hungry? What percentage of the children in my neighborhood are occasionally hungry? Well, that's pretty specific, right? That's pretty specific. Percentage, hungry, right? We, we can, certainly answerable too, right? And persuasive, right? Children shouldn't be hungry, right? And, and that's a persuasive question that we might be able to ask that can inform part of our story, if, if that's part of our story. A second question, I'm going to slide over here and read it so I'm not in, in your way. Um, I, I actually struggled making this specific. I, I started with, how do my neighbors feel about the possibility of a light rail station in our neighborhood? How do my neighbors feel about the possibility of a light rail station in our neighborhood? And, and I looked at the first criterion. Is that specific? Um, I'm not sure. They could feel a lot of different ways. That could take me a lot, a lot of different ways, right? And so I added on to that, specifically on the social fabric of the community. So together, how do my neighbors feel about the possibility of a light rail station in our neighborhood? Specifically, I'm not sure the question makes sense. <laughs> Disregard that part. We can wordsmith it later. <laughs> Specifically, 
on the social fabric of the community, making it much more specific. How do they feel, but how do they feel about connections, networks, the possibility that my neighborhood might be gentrified, get gentrified or broken up, right? How do they feel in that way? And is that answerable? I think so. I, I think for me, the answer starts with asking people, asking people this exact question. And is it persuasive? Well, I don't know. Um, this is a topic that I study quite a bit. And to me, it's quite persuasive to know that people are feeling isolated versus connected. right? And so to me, this is quite persuasive. And then um, I, I put a third question down here. What do teachers perceive to be the greatest strength of their students? What do teachers perceive to be the greatest strength of their students? Specific? I think so. I think most people would, would um, argue that that's specific and answerable, right? Again, we can ask the teachers this. And persuasive? Um, I think so as well, right? If, if our students are, are maybe being perceived as problematic, uh, only one side of the story is being told, to persuade people by showing a side that no one's seeing, I think that, that could be influential. So these are just some examples um, of questions. And uh, maybe I'll, I'll give you some foreshadowing, too, so, so you know what's coming. So what I'd like you to do now is take one of your top priority issues and try to come up with a question or two that, that can tether, that can ground your work that you're going to be doing over the next several months with us. We're going to continue to work on these questions. Um, and Laura and I will walk around, and, and please feel free to ask us, you know, is, do you think that fits? Because this is a process. And, it, and it's, it's a process that um, changes along the way. In two months from now, you might realize, well, that wasn't the question I wanted. That's fine. You can change it in two months. But start with a specific question today. Um, and so we're going to write these questions down. And then the next exercise we're going to do is we're going to, again, put you, mix, mix you with people that maybe you're not as familiar with. And we're going to ask you to think about, where can I get data? Where can I find out information about these questions? So write these questions down. And then we're going to ask the group to help you with your question. We're going to ask the group to come up with data, information that can inform that question. OK, so why don't we take um, probably about five minutes to start to write down questions. And Laura and I will be available. If you're working in groups, keep working on that in, in groups. And if you're working um, on your own, please keep working on your own. And do any of you have questions? OK, thanks. Of the neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. So, so your questions okay. might have to do with measuring those very specific things. So if we've got specific, answerable, and persuasive, then you can begin to imagine. Okay. I think some of you maybe are still deep in this work. Others of you maybe have come up with um, some some questions, and that's good. And um, and what I'd like to do now, uh, that was enjoyable for me, just hearing a few people's, um, what a few people are thinking about. And what we're going to do now is, is get a little more interactive. We're going to start to think about other people's issues. We're going to start to try to build more of a community here. So um, I'm sorry if your papers are sloppy or um, if you're not feeling particularly proud of the way you wrote. But could you do me a favor and pass them up to Laura and I? Oh, I, I thought I did. I thought that's what I thought I told you the whole thing. And make sure your organization name or your community yeah, your name, name is on there. Thank you. Oh, it's the same. You okay. They're going right back out to you. Okay. Right, put your name. We'll we're just gonna we're just gonna get help from each other. Oh yeah. I mean, rich community histories. Right. 